Good morning and welcome to Bishop Auckland Methodist Church. It's the Sunday after Christmas and I'm all alone in the church. Lots of folks still recovering from the turkey and the sprouts and this year not having as many family gathering with them to finish off that Christmas pudding and brandy sauce and everything that goes with it. I hope you have had a wonderful, peaceful Christmas and sensed the presence of God with you. You're most welcome to our worship today. And we're going to start with an Irish hymn. We could have had the Wexford Carol from the Southeast, but instead we go to the northwest of Ireland and a place called Londonderry or Derry or as the locals sometimes call it, Stroke City. And that's just from the Ulster Fry they've been eating. But that's the music of our first carol, and we join with angels as we worship. Oh, why a 
shepherd he should seek the wanderers to bring them back they know not how or when but this I know that he was born of Mary when Bethlehem's manger was his only home and that he lived at Nazareth and labored and so the Savior, Savior of the world is come I cannot tell how silently he suffered as with his peace he graced this place of tears or oh, how his heart upon the cross was broken the crown of pain to three and thirty years but this I know he heals the broken hearted and stays a sin and calms our lurking fear and lifts the burden from the heavy Yet the Saviour, Saviour of the world is He. I cannot tell how He will win the nations, how He will claim His earthly heritage and satisfy the needs and aspirations of East and West, of sinner and of sage. But this I know, all flesh shall see his glory, and he shall reap the harvest he has sown and some glad day his sun shall shine in splendor when he the saviour saviour of the world is known I cannot tell how all the land shall worship when at his bidding every storm is stilled. Or who can say how great the jubilation when every human heart is filled with love but this I know the skies will thrill with rapture and myriad myriad human voices sing and earth to heaven and heaven to earth will answer at last the Saviour, Saviour of the world is King. At last the Saviour, Saviour of the world is King. At last the Saviour, Saviour of the world is King. 
We have that hope coming to us, the child in the manger, God with us, named Emmanuel, and he is with us, as the hymn said, through all the difficulties of life, and someday he's returning, and we will sing his praises for every tear shall be dried up every hurt and pain and sorrow forgotten about in his wonderful kingdom of love and peace. And so we celebrate him with us and we celebrate what he has in store for us. But I forgive you. I forgive you at home as you've been watching on YouTube and listening on 105.9 Bishop FM. I forgive you for singing the words of Danny Boy because I get confused between the two sets of words. Our opening prayer is one of adoration, confession, and the declaration of forgiveness. Let's pray. Loving Lord Jesus, we thank you We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for all the celebrations that even this year we've been able to have. We thank you that in the midst of everything that we can still discover that you are with us, that your peace and strength and love and comfort has descended upon us again and strengthened us for the year that lies ahead. We praise and worship you, Lord Jesus, that your choice is not only to come to Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, but your choice in 2020 is to come to us in Bishop Auckland and the surrounding area. Your choice is to be with us in all the heartache that we're going through, with all the fears and worries that we've carried with us, and with all the slight hope and expectation that we have for what lies ahead in 2021. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for not trusting sufficiently in your goodness, for not trusting sufficiently that your presence with us can help us go through whatever troubles and turmoils may come our way. Forgive us for not finding peace in you, but finding or seeking to find solace in other things that provide no comfort, no long-term guarantee of peace. Instead, Lord Jesus, help us to search again for you now, just as we waited for your coming before Christmas, and now after Christmas we search for you, we wait for you again, like Simeon and Anna, like the wise men traveling from a distance, following a star, searching you out, knowing that God's gift to the world has been born, but yet to encounter that gift. So Lord, help us in our worship, and help us in our lives to search you out and to find that you are indeed with us and your love and peace is there for us and your salvation is always there for those who seek you and search you and find you as we come to the end of 2020 and enter 20, 2021. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading then takes us back many, many years to before the time of Jesus and Isaiah chapter 61 and 62. And Vanessa will read this for us. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, to chapter 62, verse 3. Jerusalem rejoices because of what the Lord has done. She is like a bride dressed for her wedding. God has clothed her with salvation and victory. 
As surely as seeds sprout and grow, the Sovereign Lord will save his people and all the nations will praise him. I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she is saved and her victory shines like a torch in the night. Jerusalem, the nations will see you victorious. All their kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name, a name given by the Lord himself. You will be like a beautiful crown for the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen indeed, Vanessa. And God will save his people. God will rescue and intervene. And God's people will praise him again with rejoicing. In fact, all the universe should praise God. And that's the theme of our second reading from Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven you that live in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels, all his heavenly armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters above the sky. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. He commanded us and they were created. By his command they were fixed in their place forever and they cannot disobey. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, strong winds that obey his commands. Praise him, hills and mountains, fruit trees and forests, all, all animals tame and wild, reptiles and birds. Praise him, kings and all peoples, princes and all other rulers, girls and young men, old people and children too. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. His name is greater than all others. His glory is above earth and heaven. He made his nation strong so that all his people praise him. The people of Israel so dear to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord indeed, Cliff. Praise him, all you sea monsters out there listening on a 105.9 Bishop FM, if anybody's listening in the depths of the ocean. Praise him, lightning and hail, and I hope that stays away. Nice frosty clear days would be nice though. Praise him, all you old folk and all you children too. And it is God's children praising him and knowing his love that we hear about in our third reading from Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 to 7, entitled God's Children. But when the right time finally came, God sent his own son. He came as the son of a human mother and lived under the Jewish law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might become God's children. To show that you are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Father, my father, so then, you are no longer a slave, but a child. And since you are his child, God will give you all that he has for his children. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen, indeed. Well, I, I know Santa Claus arrived, and I know lots of children got presents and wonderful gifts over Christmas, and God gives good gifts to his children. And even though Santa Claus might have stopped coming to me a year or two back, God still gives to me as a relatively old fella, and God still gives to his older children. And in our final 
lesson, we will hear from um, Simeon and Anna, some very old children, and they will receive from God also. But before we get to that, star child, we listen to a carol. Star Child, a wonderful modern hymn written by Shirley Murray, who died earlier on this year. Hope for peace, child, God's stupendous sign, down to earth, child, star of stars that shine. Simeon and Anna never gave up their childish longing for that hope, for that peace. And even year after year, they were disappointed that that child didn't seem to arrive. They kept on longing, hoping. They kept on faithfully watching out. They kept on waiting, confident in a God who gives good gifts to his children of a few months old, or six or seven years old, or 80 or 90 years old, God gives good gifts. And so we come to our gospel reading from Luke chapter 2 and verses 22 to 40. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses 
the child to, be, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise and you have let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things that Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart, Mary. There was a very old prophet, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour, she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. And when Joseph and Mary had finished doing all that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown of Nazareth in Galilee. And the child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom, and God's blessings were upon him. Amen. Waiting all those years, through long years of watchful waiting, Simeon and Anna's deep devotion shone. Now embodied by 
in the light of patient servants, Christ self-giving lives again. We listen and watch now. Waiting for the sermon or waiting for the end of the service? Waiting, beginning to think that the day of salvation would never come. Simeon and Anna, I think, were probably fed up waiting. But maybe they were better than me. Maybe they were continuing to wait with faithfulness, not getting fed up, knowing that God keeps His promises, that we often have to wait, but God keeps His promises, maintaining their faith, and then recognizing whenever their cataracts and old age and need of glasses probably were there, recognizing the infant Jesus from the hundreds, the thousands, the tens of thousands of children who came before them in previous years, recognizing that in Jesus, this was God's answer to a hurting world. 
So what did Simeon say? Very quickly, this was part one. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. Here was the answer for everybody, Simeon is saying. For the whole world, whatever background, whatever tradition, here was God's answer in the child he held in his arms. This was the answer, the salvation, the light, the hope. Part two is mentioned less often. Simeon then said this. He said it not to the Gentiles, not to everybody out there. He said it to those in the temple, the true Israelites, the people of God, and therefore to the church folk today listening to Simeon's wise words. This child, he said, is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. We've been waiting with hope, but he says this child for God's people, not for those who don't believe, but this child for God's people depends on our accepting or rejecting the child. It's how we respond. Do we accept the gift of God's Son and our Savior? Or is it a present nicely wrapped, not in swaddling bands, but offered to us on a cross at Calvary, but rejected by us? Do we reject the one that has come to save us? Anna also spoke, She never left the temple, we are told. Day and night she was always there, worshiping God, fasting, praying, waiting, longing, watching. And that very same hour she arrived, again to give thanks to God, not to complain that she was fed up waiting, to give thanks to God. And she saw the child and spoke to all who were waiting for God to set them free. And she could see in Jesus that freedom, that release, that that peace. She waited. She waited, fasting and praying and never leaving God's presence. As we wait for the completion of the kingdom of Christ Jesus, do we wait with moaning and grumpiness? Do we wait and say, we don't want that gift? Or do we wait with patience, watching always for Christ Jesus coming again, waiting for the freedom that he brings, as Anna reminds us, and God's justice and joy for all the world. Amen. When memory fades, maybe Simeon couldn't quite recall all the things as quickly as he once had. And when recognition falters, and perhaps Anna struggled to recognize and name the people that she should have known, They, however, were aging meaningfully with purpose, value, and hope, as our hymn suggests. i
Let us pray. And our first prayers of response are Hannah's creative prayer. Today is the last Sunday in 2020. Thinking about the last year, what resolutions could you make for 2021? These could be things in your Christian journey, like taking time out of your day to read part of the Bible or in other parts of your life. If you are able, you can ask God to help you throughout this year and be with you in any challenges you may face. Thank you, Hannah, for reminding us to wait for God's completion of, of the kingdom of Christ Jesus, to wait by turning to Scripture, by turning to prayer. So let us offer our prayer with all God's people through Jesus Christ our Lord, whoever lives to pray for us. We pray for the needs of the world, for all peoples in light or darkness, for all peoples in wealth or poverty, for we are all in need of salvation. We are all in need of hope, of love, of peace. We pray for the church with a message of love and hope and peace, a message of waiting, accepting Christ Jesus now and waiting for his greater gifts of the fullness of his kingdom to come. We pray for his church that struggles through these days with buildings closed in some places with congregations not able to gather and worship. But we pray for the church, God's people, wherever they are, at home or at work or in church buildings. God's people praying for those who are their neighbors, praying for all who are in trouble and distress, praying for God's gift of peace, to come to be with them in 2021. We pray for all who make a new beginning, for all who will put the old year behind them and who will turn to a more positive start in the days that lie ahead, for those who find faith to wait and trust and to receive God's gift of Jesus Christ into their lives. God of compassion and mercy, listen to our prayer. May what we ask in Jesus Christ, your Son, be done according to his word who said, Ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. To you, merciful God, through your Son in the life-giving Spirit, be glory and praise forever. Amen. And we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we listen or sing along at home to our final hymn. As the thunder of the organ dies away, go now with the blessing of God. Go with the patience of Anna and Simeon. And go with the peace of the Christ child who goes with you into 2021. And do come back next week when my colleague, the Reverend David Payne, will lead us in a covenant service, the Methodist covenant service. And that is next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on radio or on our YouTube station. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Christmas season. And peace to you and all your family for the year ahead. Amen.